Whoa! <laughs> He's my mess to clean up every day. Hey, we're at Made On today. We're gonna make a big fire and cook some meat over. We can talk about life. Let's go. My confidence never wavered. Hey, we're at Made On in Washington, D.C. with Chris. Chris, wave! And Gerald, Gerald, wave! And Brent, Brent, wave! And we're gonna learn how to cook over open fire on all of these contraptions that I have no idea what they do. But first, we gotta make a fire. You get in in the morning, you have your coffee, and then this is what you do. Basically, nothing really starts until this happens. We have it pretty dialed into a science as far as how we build it, but it took a while to get there. If you don't layer them properly or you use too big of logs to get it started, you can run into trouble. I mean, as I mean, you can see now, Gerald's got like a bunch of smaller logs. We kind of hand select the logs you want to use to start them. You want to get a lot of oxygen. Yeah. yeah. If you try to like build it too much, it's just nothing's going to happen. If the logs are too big, it'll be hard for them to catch. These are all pretty small, so like by the time the bottom is lit and all this paper lights, this will all light pretty easily, and then we can start adding the bigger logs. box in the center is uh, more like your traditional firebox, um, which feeds that front grill. And then this one here, this, this, this bit is left lower and uses more like ambient heat yeah. to service this entire top area of things roasting, but also to feed this and the ovens. So how are we feeling about this fire? I think we're good. It's basically maintaining itself kind of where we want it to be. Let everything get hot. Burn down the nice embers. Where did the whole Middle Eastern inspiration come from? We traveled a lot before opening the restaurant and we thought about this sort of more broad context of like food from all over the place. Thought like, whoa, it kind of actually makes sense to serve food from Morocco to Iran. We just felt that all that food would eat very well together. Gerald and I, growing up in Northern Virginia, large part of my high school was Iranian. You know, fortunate enough to experience Iranian food in people's homes at a younger age. Home cooking. Home cooking. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, which drove our like, minds in one direction in terms of like we have to go to that part of the world and try food as it's cooked in people's houses and then bring those traditions home paying homage to traditions and recipes that we were taught or shown all right while we wait for the fire to get nice and hot we're going to prep our ribeye this is uh, like a georgian spice ribeye so first question what makes this ribeye georgian uh, so the spicing we use, so we use uh, blue fenugreek, which is a specific type of uh, fenugreek from Georgia. It's one of the most typical spices there. You just see it in like everything. And then ajika, which is a Georgian chili powder. We mix it together with the fenugreek and it's, I don't know, I think a pretty interesting rub. Anyway, so we're going to cut steaks out of this. We're not going to weigh, but I'm feeling pretty good about that one. It's that's a, that's a pretty big, big steak. Um, so we'll trim it down just a tiny bit. It's a big guy. So this is our rub, this is the blue fenugreek and the uh, ajika. This actually I brought back from Georgia. We just did a dinner there. Really? Uh, and then went and traveled to Armenia after. We basically found the guy in their big market who sells like the highest quality of this that he picks in the mountain himself. He grinds it for you in front of you. I brought back like eight kilos of it. It's really hard to find here, so. We found that because it is spiced really heavily, we don't really want to use like a really big open flame. So we cook it on the most gentle part of the grill over okay. like a very slow ember. And I find that way like the fat renders a little bit more slowly on the ribeye. Mm -hmm. You don't burn the spices. I think it comes out really, really nicely. Well, the, I mean, honestly, like, you know, Ben and I talk about this, that this is kind of like blasphemous for us. <laughs> because yeah, for sure. With, like the steaks that we sell, we just recommend salt and pepper because like every steak is almost like a learning experience. Like you want to know, like you know where it came from, but based on the age and the fat and all of the things, we want to be able to give the farmer feedback, all of that stuff. So we don't, we don't recommend it, um, but this seems like a really fun delicacy. <laughs> yeah, this has been a, a really different for us because neither Chris or I are Middle Eastern at all. And we really want to embrace like 
the traditions before us. Uh, so that's been really important for us, is like trying to learn old recipes. And people are always gonna tell us that something's wrong, and that's fine. Like, because it's such a small part of the world and there's so many different countries and villages, like, people will be like, no, 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 no that's not how, like, my grandmother did it or how we do it, like, where yeah. I'm from, like. But people will tell me all the time that they hate something and it should be done this way, and like, often I'll try it. I'll listen to anyone, like. I'm not the expert. It's such a personal thing, this food, that for me to say like, oh, you know, whatever, like. Yeah, no, I'm doing like, it the right way. Yeah, thing. like, I'm not, like, I don't know anything. The beauty of live fire cooking is like, and part of the difficulty is like, theoretically, if I wanted, I could stack all this to one side if I really wanted to get color on something. See how the flame immediately starts shooting through the top. You know, shake it out. I could fan it. If you took an infrared thermometer and took the temp of that, you would notice that it skyrockets at least 300 degrees with the fanning process. Whoa. Um, really? Yeah. Huh. Anyway, so. Like you can barely hear a sizzle on that. Yeah. Well, the idea, which I think a lot of people, you know, you have to be really careful, especially with the size of the steak. So Gerald and I both agree that like a gentle cook it's much preferable, and like, albeit that's like crazy close to the fire, but it's not, if I move it to here, there's a risk that there's not enough ambient heat. Yep. So it's almost serving like an oven, if you think about it that way, right? You have all this like top temperature that's kind of like encapsulating the, the beef itself. We should say like, just standing here, it is yeah. radiating a lot. My, of my face is incredibly hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh dude, it gets, this isn't even You like, do this for six hours a night. Yeah. And we love it. And then, you know, you'll just add wood as you need to. But yeah, it's pretty pretty simple, but we, you know, I, I thoroughly believe that cooking over fire, you really can't get better flavor than that. That's This is a show. That's yeah. kind of the, another part of the thing, is like, we wanted to create this feeling of a Maidan being, uh, as it's used, the words used throughout the Middle East and that, you know, North Africa and Caucasus as well as Russia. Downstairs of our restaurant is intended to be this like gathering place or town square type feel. It is kind of amazing and I'm kind of curious, did you, did you mean by creating what essentially you, you described as like a town hall experience, were you really inviting that interaction with customers? We were, we were trying to, yeah. Yeah, I mean given our experience abroad, uh, it made sense. We had so many amazing experiences while traveling that were tied to insane levels of hospitality that you just don't see here. One of the things I love about this restaurant is we're really not trying to recreate anything uh, or reinvent anything. We're literally just trying to, it's just sheer inspiration and love. Do you see Maidan as primarily like a food focused business or a hospitality focused business? I think those go hand in hand. I, I think hospitality, and food is hospitality, you know, food is, for me, I mean, people may feel differently, I think food is the most comforting thing in the world for me. Oh, yeah. Guys, I don't mean to spoil it, but this is gonna be good. Cool. Go ahead, eat. Who's going first? I encourage uh, yeah. the lack of utensils. Woo! Yeah. I, could eat, I could eat just that. Over and over and over. That is so good. Oh my God, those spices are incredible. So nice. I think the, the patience really pays off. Like, yeah. it's nice, perfectly cooked, like, no brown edges. It's really wonderful. Gerald, Chris, thank you guys thank so, you so much, much for this. It's, uh, super happy y'all stopped by, for sure. You guys have some amazing food and you've created an amazing, amazing experience. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Come back. For more episodes of Primetime, click here. This could be Very well balanced. This is nice.